How's it going everybody? I'm Alex Quiroz. Today's video is about making hinges for box projects. Um, every once in a while if you're doing some woodworking you're going to get a request for some, from somebody to make an actual box project. Now there's two different ways that you can do a box project. Well actually maybe three. You can have a sliding lid, you can have one that removes completely off the box itself, and you can have one that actually attaches to the box with hinges. And that is the whole point of this video today. This video is not covering how to make this box. That will be another video that I'll, I'll have to make for another time. But while I was actually going to install the hinges, I figured why not stop, cut a quick video, and show you guys how I install hinges. There are different ways to install hinges. This is the way that works for me. I've been doing it like this, and I haven't had any issues with this process. So as you can see here, this lid remains on the box. I have two hinges installed on the inside. So if you really want to learn how, stay tuned. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Okay, so the first step that we're going to take is getting the hinges that you purchased, and we are going to place it against the box, and we are going to find a comfortable position to where you believe they're going to look the best, especially on the back side. Now this is a 15 and a half inch box here and I found that three inches on the interior portions of the hinge was going to look the best. So before I started this video, I started actually marking out these lines. I went ahead and stopped what I was doing um, so that I can do a video of this and that way you guys can learn how to put hinges on these boxes. There are different ways to do it. This is the way that I do it, and it's the way that works for me. Okay, we're gonna start this thing from the absolute beginning as if I hadn't even made these marks yet. So the first thing that you wanna do is make your mark with your whatever tool you're using to make your three inches, or this is my three inches here. It's not gonna be three inches on your box, whatever you decide on measuring your hinges out. So I make a mark here with a pencil, and I make a mark here. Now, I know this sounds ridiculous because you're not supposed to be using a pencil in order to do the hinges, but there's a reason for that. I then get my hinge, and I make sure it's the right way. And this is where you want to make your marking in the direction of the hinge so you do not cut the incorrect way. I put a little line in the direction that I want the hinge to go. And I know that the, the hinge is going to sit in this 90 degree corner here and it's going to be in this direction. If I didn't make that mark, there's a chance that I can actually cut this portion out, and I don't want to cut that portion out. You'll have hinges that are not, not correct. So on the second one, the line is on the inner portion of the hinge, as in this one was on the inner portion but facing this way. This one is on the inner portion facing this way. So make sure that you mark the direction of your hinge. Now I can see here, I need to make sure that I mark and measure everything on this side. You can even put an X here, it doesn't really matter. So you do not confuse yourself to which way the hinge lines up. If I didn't make that marking, I'm taking the chance of having a hinge here, and having a hinge here, or having a hinge here, and having a hinge here. They will not measure out correctly, so just take that extra step knowing which direction your hinge is going to lie. Another reason to why I line this portion up the top of the hinge is so that my cut line does not pass that portion. I know that my hinge is not going to be over here. So I want to make sure that my knife does not pass that line. I am going to get close to that line, but I'm not going to go up to that line because I don't know if my hinge is actually going to start or end about a sixteenth of an inch below that top line. Okay, so this is a marking knife here. You can see there's a beveled edge on one side and a flat edge on the other. You want to be able to press the flat edge portion against whatever marking tool it is that you're using to make your lines. Okay, so naturally you're going to, which is completely incorrect, you're going to want to put your hinge against the line that you made and start using your knife here to make your mark. I'm, I'm not digging into the wood right now. This is the incorrect way of doing it. You have, you're, you're risking the chance of this thing moving on you and your line's not going to come out straight. Use the marking tool, the measuring tool, whatever you used, um, to, to make the line so that it's nice and accurate. Again, here is my line that I made with a pencil. 
And this is the first line I made with my marking tool already, my knife. But we're going to start this again like I explained. So what you want to do is get right below that last, that top line there, about a sixteenth of an inch below. Move the marking gauge towards that knife and cut your line. So now we have this line cut out here. We have to do the next line. Now, again, what you want to do is you're going to take your hinge and you are going to measure out where the next one's at. We are going to readjust our measuring tool get our knife again. Again, there's a two sides to the knife. You have a beveled edge and you have a flat edge. We're going to use the flat edge against the measuring tool. Hold this nice and sturdy and make your mark. Now we have two marks for the hinge and as you can see here, both markings are fitting on each side of the hinge. We are now going to move over to the other side. Again, imagine that this was a pencil line and not the gouge that I made earlier with the knife. Typically I would be adjusting my body the other way, but because the camera is here right now, I'm going to go ahead and do it just like this. Beveled edge like away from the, the measuring tool, flat edge against. Sixteenth of an inch below that top line and strike your line. Again, we are going to get our hinge. We are going to lay it against that line that we placed already. And we're going to make our marking here. And just in case so you don't pass that line, marking here. Readjust your measuring tool right up against that second line. Keep in mind, if you're using a measuring tool, you don't want to use it in this manner where it's hanging off the corner of your box. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of shaking. You want it as secure as possible, but yet as close to that line as possible as well. So right about with a little hangover just so your knife completely clears the wood. So again, flat edge against the measuring tool, 16th of an inch below that line. Now we have both lines cut out of the hinge. And as you can see here, we are going to have a nice fit. Okay, so the next step is getting this marking gauge. You can buy these off of Amazon or your uh, wood stores, I'm sure. This is a great tool to have for doing this. Instead of using another knife or the same knife and trying to line yourself up and making this marking here. The reason why it's very useful is because of the measuring itself. What you want to do is get your hinge, whatever hinge you're using. So if you're using different types of hinges, two different hinges, which you shouldn't be on the box, but let's say you're doing two different projects, two different hinges, you're gonna to have to maneuver this marking gauge throughout those different hinges. The trick to this is to put the hinge against the base plate of the marking gauge and this cutter head up on top to be half the distance of the hinge barrel itself. I'm, just, I'm not quite sure what this is called, but I believe it's called a barrel. Correct me if I'm wrong. So as you can see here, my marking gauge is set up. Halfway to the barrel of that hinge. And that's where I want my cut to be. So we take the marking gauge that we just measured out, make sure everything's nice and tight. And we place the base portion against the side, the back side of the box. 
And you don't want to start your marking gauge way over here. You want to start it within the lines that you already made. And we will finish it off in a bit. And you want to stop just short of that line. Believe it or not, this maneuver here has a big difference in making a crisp line for your chisels. There we go. Okay, now take a look at this. This here is where I anticipated the hinge to end. However, the hinge is actually ending up here. If you can see the line, try to move out of the light here. This portion is where the marking gauge had hit, and this is where I thought initially the hinge was going to end. Makes a big difference in using some measuring tools. Let's work on the next one. So I do not need to readjust my measuring tool because of the fact that it's already adjusted for the, the same exact hinge that I'm using. So the barrel should be exactly the same. So I'm going to place, again, I'm going to place the base portion against the wood. I'm going to push down with my finger and drop it into place. That way I know it's perfectly flushed. I'm going to then roll this marking gauge You can feel the traction. I mean, I can let go and this thing's already hooked in there. I'm going to stop short of the line. Come back out this way. I'm going to stop short of the line. This should be enough here so that I don't have to worry about uh, doing any more. Now, Depending on how you feel about doing this, you can freestyle this line here this way and finish it off this way. Me personally, I'm not that accurate with straight lines without using something. So I'm going to get my measuring tool, set it up the exact way I had it before, and finish off those lines. Just right there. I don't need to go all the way down. I'm going to move to the other one and then we're going to come back and finish off these lines. Okay, so the next step that we're going to take is we're going to use the router to route out a big chunk of the mortise here for the hinge to fit in. The trick to doing this is you want a flat bottom on this, on this mortise right here. So you want to use a bit with a flat bottom. So just like the marking gauge that we use, the trick to this is to place your hinge against the bit and you want that bit to be halfway of the barrel, just like the marking gauge. Now, this is hard to do with this long reach. You're not going to have an accurate measurement. It's going to be doing this. You want to get your Craig tool and get to place this portion against the hinge and raise the tool up to where it's halfway of the barrel, right about there. Lock it into place, that way there's a positive stop. Double check it to make sure nothing moved on you. And as you can see there, it is halfway of the barrel. Then you take your measuring tool with what you just adjusted and you place the metal portion on the base of your router until you get that blue portion touching the bottom of the router bit. That will give you the most accurate measurement. Now, as you can see here, my router bit is too high. This is flat against the router base. If I move it to the router bit, it's barely touching, but it's not going over without me lifting up the, the measuring tool. So that means the bit needs to be dropped. So let's go ahead and drop the bit until it absolutely touches the bottom portion of the measuring tool. Right there. Couldn't get any more accurate than that. Okay, so the next step is to cut out the mortises for these hinges. Now, get yourself a flat surface, as flat as possible, uh, because the next step, we're going to do a little trick in order to be able to cut these out. 
you do not want to use your, your router and try to do it in this manner. It is going to tilt on you. You're not going to get the flat bottom portion that you need. And it's just not safe to do it that way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get a scrap piece of wood. I cut it out to roughly the same size as the box. It doesn't have to be specifically exactly the same. It is close enough, 15 and a half inches. And what we're going to do here is we're going to flip this box upside down. Place that piece of wood. And this is why you need the flat surface because... The, flat, the top portion of the box as well as the top portion of the wood need to be uh, right lined up with each other. You're going to get yourself a clamp and you're going to clamp the two pieces together as long as they're flat. Once we get this clamp set up here, we're going to make sure that these are both pushed down against the flat surface. You want whatever portion you're clamping, whatever side the, the, the router is going to be on, to be a I guess it's below the top of the wood, but it's above the bottom of the wood. It doesn't have to be more than, like it doesn't have to be dramatic. It just has to be so that the router can actually clear without hitting that clamp. Done correctly, you should have a board that's now sitting flushed with the top of your box. As you can see, that is pretty flushed all the way across. Now, whatever surface you're working on, you may have one that doesn't require you to have to do this angle turn. Mine, unfortunately, does, so I have to angle my box Place the clamp, close that garbage lid, and that way I have a comfortable position for mortising. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this portion down as well. Okay, since I already have my router set, you can do a couple things here. You can readjust your router so that you know for a fact that if it pops up you're gonna have the same exact spot when you need to readjust it if needed what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay my router down on its side and I'm gonna let it press itself into the wood so I don't have to make re any readjustments the speed on your router um, not that big of a deal you just don't want it blowing out any sort of wood. So I usually set mine to a low. Um, again, this is a Colt, the, the Bosch brand. So right between two and a half to three is where I'm going to start it off. And we're gonna go ahead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut short of the lines. We're not gonna cut all the way to the lines. We're just gonna cut close to them, but short enough just for the chisel to do the rest of the work and I will be gouging out a portion of the scrap wood that we placed here. So here we go. Okay, so my clamp is currently in the way of the router base itself, so I'm going to have to readjust this clamp here. To another location. Hopefully this is good enough for it. Box is still sturdy. And now my router can clear that. So, some mistake I made in the beginning, but it could be fixed.
And the reason I like to set this depth stop here is because I have a tendency to when I am done routing something is to pop the router up before I turn it off. In this circumstance here, I'm not trying to do that. Um, I don't want to do that because I want to leave it at the same measurement, but just by habit, habit had I actually used this thumb flip here, it would have popped it up and I would have had to readjust the whole entire thing again. Okay, let me get the knife here so you guys can see. Here are my lines that I use to mark. And as you can see, I did not pass those lines. I came within those lines. Now I look like I know this looks like an ugly mortise here, but it's obviously not finished off. We want to use the chisel for the remainder, and we don't want to start. You don't want to put your chisel. Make sure that you use the flat portion of the chisel when you're pushing against the um, the markings themselves. You don't want to use the beveled edge. However, you don't want to start here and push in. You want to start. Let me get a smaller. You want to start away from the line and work yourself towards that line. And you don't even need a hammer. You just need to push with a little bit of pressure. To get those out. Okay, and now with the mortise taken out, everything's squared up, you get your hinge and you just verify that it actually fits within the mortise itself. And you can see that it's flushed to the wood. There's a little bit of tear out right there. Just clean that up with my finger. The only reason it's not gonna look completely flushed is because of the board that we're using to assist with the, the, the router itself. Um, once I take this board off, it'll have a nice fit. We go ahead and move over from this side to this side, and it's the same exact process. So I'm gonna get this one down, and we're gonna come back once I'm done with this. Okay, so now that both hinges are in, as you can see here, this is a nice tight fit. It's not super tight, but it's not loose at all. It's very hard to move this left or right. Um, again, this is flushed with this portion of the wood itself let me see this here as low as i can get with the camera this thing is flushed um it's just unfortunate that you can't really tell right now because again this piece of wood that we're using is kind of setting it offset however that is the final portion of this hinge and the mortise itself the next step is doing the lid Okay, so just as we did before with the scrap piece that we clamped to the, uh, the box itself, I went ahead, flipped the box, placed the lid against the box, and clamped it together. Just the same exact way as I did with this board. Now what I want to do is I want to measure out these lines. Everything here is flushed, 100% accurate, and we are going to mark these out so that I know where these uh, where the mortise is going to start and end. Okay. Now we're going to take our Craig measuring tool. I no longer need the router bit uh, measurement on here because it is already complete. And I'm going to take my knife, place it against one of the edges of the mortise, and lock my Craig in so that we're in perfect position. I can go ahead and strike the line here, but prior to doing that, I want to get the hinge again. Now again, this is not gonna be 100% accurate as the marking gauge has showed you, but I do want an idea of where this hinge is going to stop. Do the same exact with this side. That way that's already in place. 
Now I know that my knife, even though the marking gauge is going to be about a sixteenth of an inch higher than this line, I know my line is not going to pass. Uh, my my mark with the knife is not going to pass this line. I do not just to be safe. I don't want to. I don't want it to pass that line. So I'm going to go ahead and strike this line here. Same exact process as we did. with the, um, the mortises on the box. Now this clamp is in my way here, so I'm gonna have to readjust this clamp. But since this clamp is holding it in position, all I gotta do is just flatten it out once, I'm, once I drop it. Okay. So go ahead and take our measuring tool I'm going to actually switch sides so I can show you how I would do this the correct way. And take our measuring tool, place it against the box, get the flat portion of the knife, and don't pass that line. Now we have our line coming from this side across that side, and we have our line from this side to this side. Next step, obviously, is marking this portion out, marking this portion out, and then taking our marking gauge, same exact position that it's in, and utilizing it against the box once I take this off from the clamp. We're gonna utilize this against the base portion of the side of this box side, and we're gonna roll it down until we get our line marked out on these sides. So we're gonna get that done real fast, and we'll be right back. Okay, so, now that we have the, the hinges routed out, uh, we are going to use the chisels again, just like we did with the box, to take out the remainder of the wood up to our lines. As you can see here with the lines, I didn't pass with the router, I didn't pass those lines that I marked out. So as I said before, there are two ways that you can do this. You can get your chisel, make sure that's a flat portion, um, let me see if I get a better angle here for you. The flat portion against the uh, the line that you marked out. You don't want to use the beveled edge. It'll give you an angle. You want the flat edge to be able to take it straight down. You can apply pressure such as this. And that way you have a clean cut across. And when you take your little chunk out, it should come out just like that. And it'll come up to your line. If you don't like to put pressure against it, you get your chisel you line it straight up with that marking gauge enough so that you can almost feel, well you can feel, the mortise sucked into that line where you can't move it back and forth. So you can get a small hammer or a mallet of some sort and just give it a little tap and that should do it right there as well. So whichever way that you desire, as you can see that one just popped right off there. Um, it doesn't matter which way you do it, you can use pressure or you can use a hammer. Okay, now that you can see that we have our hinges mortised out here and they're perfectly lined up, we are going to do the same process as if, as if we started with the router and we place the backboard portion, the scrap piece of wood on the backside to assist us with the routing. Uh, we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna flip this this way. And just so you know, make sure you flip this board the exact same way line this up and we're going to clamp these together. Make sure you're putting pressure down on the lid and the box so that they are perfectly flat with each other. Let's go ahead and flip this. And we are lined up. And we have a perfect fit on both sides. Flushed on this side, flushed on this side, and we are ready to screw these in. Okay, the last step to putting the hinges on are putting the screws in. Now, what we want to do is we want to start a screw on this corner. That's a magnetic screwdriver. On this corner itself and this corner. Then we're going to do the same with the other hinge. We just don't want to put them all four at the same time in case we need to make any adjustments. So. You do not want to drive these screws in with a, with a driver. You want to use a screwdriver of some sort, and a very small one. As you can see, these are 
very, very tiny screws. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a punch. And what this does is it creates a small divot in the wood in order to, um, to use a drill bit to get in there. We want to be exactly centered with the hole. You don't want to be offset in any portion of the hole, otherwise your hinge is going to grasp onto that and it's going to start twisting. So you want to make sure that you are in center of the hole. Take your time doing this. This is the last step, so make sure you do take your time. Center. Make sure your hinge is lined up how you want it. Center. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a drill bit, very, very small drill bit. Now you can put a piece of tape around the drill bit itself. What I like to do, and uh, I do this quite a bit, is put my drill bit as close to the chuck as possible, the teeth of it, and that way I know that that's as far as I should be going with the drill bit once I hit that point. That's it, that's all it takes. One more on the other one. Make sure you're straight up and down. And get your screwdriver. Place it in the pilot hole you just made. Screw that in. Really is just that simple. It's just taking your time, lining these up, and that way you have the screws going in perfectly with the head flush to the actual hinge. All right, we're gonna do the same to the other side, and then we're gonna knock out all four. And then we'll be done with the hinges. You can see we are lined up on the hinges on the back side, and we are flushed all the way around. And that is how you install hinges for a box. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.